Great. Well, good morning. Welcome to Youngstown Baptist Church English Sunday School class for the 26th of February, 2023. Time's flying by. And if you didn't know it was that late, then you've probably fallen behind. <laughs> it's been a couple of weeks since we started our study of the book of Joshua. So if you'll turn with me to Joshua chapter 1, we'll jump back in where we left off. We had a really quick lesson last time, so we'll just do a little bit of a review. But I want to start with reading the first nine verses of Joshua chapter 1. So if you're there with me, let's follow. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper with the sword thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. So we started the book of Joshua a couple of weeks ago before I had to take a business trip and started with the concept that God buries his workmen, like Moses, but his work continues. There's not a single person throughout Scripture upon which everything depends except for Jesus Christ. All of his workmen are used for the time that they have, but the work continues. So that's very humbling and very encouraging for us. And we learned some things, or we looked at some things that we know about Joshua, and some things that we know about the book of Joshua. We'll just go into a few. We saw how Joshua was born into Egyptian slavery. He was the son of Nun of the tribe of Ephraim. His original name was Oshea, or Hoshea, which means salvation, but Moses changed his name to Joshua in the English, obviously, which means Jehovah is salvation. And Joshua in the English, as we looked at, is the equivalent of the Hebrew Yeshua, which is the name of Jesus in Greek. So Jesus in the Greek, Joshua in the English, Yeshua in uh, Hebrew is all the same name. So he served as Moses' minister during the wilderness, wilderness wanderings. He led the army in the battle against Amalek. And he was one of two spies who had the faith to enter the promised land the first time. Along with Caleb, the other spy, Joshua was the oldest man in Israel at this time. Uh, Joseph, or Joshua led Israel in the conquest of Canaan, which was about a seven-year process. He will divide the inheritance for Israel, and he is a type of Christ, as we saw in Hebrews 4.8. So just as jo Joshua conquered earthly enemies, Christ defeated every enemy through his death and resurrection. Moses could not bring Israel into the promised land because he re represented the law. But Joshua, or Jesus, represented the victory that we have by faith. And we have an inheritance in heaven that should be realized by faith in this life to go out and do the things God has commanded us to do. And then Joshua died at the age of 110. I hope I don't make it that long. <laughs> and what we saw about the book of Joshua was that it's the sixth book of the Old Testament, the first book in what the Hebrew Bible is called history, right? There are 12 history books. There's the, the Pentateuch, right? That's the law, and then history, and then the prophets. So God covers, or the, the book of Joshua covers the crossing of the Jordan, the conquest of Canaan, and the claiming of the inheritance. I love alliteration. The theme is entering and claiming our inheritance in Christ, realizing a life of rest and victory through faith. So what we uh, talked about before we finished up a couple of weeks ago is that too many Christians are still wandering in between Egypt and Canaan in their lives, which represents the world 
and God's promised um, uh, victory for us. They have been delivered from the bondage of sin, but they've not by faith entered into the inheritance and rest and victory. And we'll see when we get through this book that there are several tribes who never actually gain the inheritance that's promised to them by God, that's offered freely to them, and that in these first nine verses we saw no man could keep them from it. The only thing that kept them from their inheritance was their own unbelief and disobedience. And just like that, many Christians will never see the victorious, abundant life that Christ has for them just because of their own unbelief and disobedience. So, let's delve into these first nine verses with some real meat and not just uh, uh, previews. And we'll look first at the commission of Joshua. If you have the notes, that's the first line there, the commission of Joshua. And we see that God speaks to Joshua in these first nine verses. Um, so we're going to look at a couple of things here, but in verse 2 through 4, we'll see the first thing God promised to Joshua. Does anybody know what that is? No? Not looking at the notes? Okay. So the first thing that God promises to Joshua is the land. Let's look at verse 2 through 4. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the land of the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. That's a lot of land. I've been to Israel, I don't know if you've been to Israel, and um, I can tell you that what is described there from Lebanon to the Euphrates, from the Great Sea, which is the Mediterranean, to the going down of the sun, which is, right, um, the, this whole, uh, so the Great, onto the Great Sea toward the going down of the sun, so going to the west. Um, from Euphrates, there is, there is no time in Israel's history where they had all of the land to the river Euphrates. They've had the land to the river Jordan, maybe a little past the river Jordan at the very beginning, when there was the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of, of uh, Manasseh, or half the tribe of Manasseh, and the tribe of, what was the other one? Manasseh, right? Yes, it was Benjamin. Reuben, Benjamin, and half tribe of Manasseh were on the other side of Jordan. And so then those, that was just the other side of Jordan. It definitely was never claimed all the way to Euphrates, which is in um, far over into the Middle East and in, in modern day Iraq. So all of what is the current country of Jordan is in space that was promised to Israel, but they never took it. Right? Lebanon down to the Red Sea, the Mediterranean to the Euphrates. That was a lot of land. Everything where on their feet would tread. Um, God promised it to them, but they never saw it. And they still don't have it. Then, if we look in verse 5, the second thing God promised them is his presence. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. So God promised the land to the people, but he promised his presence specifically to Joshua, but by extension to the people. And then he also said in verse 6 through 9, he promised to keep his word. Those are the other two blanks there. He promised to keep his word in verse 6 through 9. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Um, and at the end, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whether so it thou goest, the end of verse 9. So we saw what God promised Joshua, but the next thing is what must Joshua do with the word of God in order to have the courage that he needed? I'll give you a hint, it's in verse 8. What must Joshua do with the word of God? Constantly think on it. First thing is he's got to read it, right? You, you don't, if you don't. We talked about it in the last eight lessons, right, about the importance of reading the Bible. If you never read the Bible, you don't know the Bible. If you don't know the Bible, you can't meditate on the Bible. If you don't meditate on the Bible, it's not hidden in your heart, and you can't trust it. But you start, you got to start with reading. So, obviously, verse 8, 1, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. So if reading it is first, what's second? 
meditate. Yes, exactly. Meditate on it day and night. And that's not just in verse 8 there. It's also in Psalm 1, Psalm 119. We, we, again, we did many um, verses about meditating on Scripture in our last series of the importance of reading the Bible. And then finally, you read it, you meditate on it, and then the Bible says here you must observe to do according to all that is written therein. So we need to read the Bible, we need to meditate on the Bible, and we need to obey the Bible. Read, meditate, and obey are the three blanks there. So courage is demanded in the Christian life just as much as it was from the people of Israel, but it's supplied by the Word of God. If Joshua was able to conquer the promised land with only five books of the Bible, how much more of our Christian life should we be able to overcome? Right? How, much, how many more of the things that stand in our way of the giants in our path or the adversaries both personally created and that are out in the world, how much more of that should we be able to overcome when we have the full canon of Scripture? So, we have everything from the Genesis to the Revelation, whereas he, at this point, only had what Moses taught the first five books of it, at best. So, Joshua then, after God speaks to Joshua in verses 1 through 9, Joshua then speaks to the people. That's verses 10 through 15. So there is a spiritual chain of command here, then, as Joshua speaks to the people. We'll see in verse 9, as it carries over, how God commanded Joshua. He said, have I not commanded thee? So jo God commands Joshua in verse 9, but then Joshua commands the leaders of Israel in verse 10. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people. And then the leaders were to command the people. We see that in verse 11. Pass through the host, command the people saying, Prepare your victuals, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. So, verse 9, Have I not commanded thee? That's God commanding Joshua. Verse 10, Joshua commanded the officers of the people. He commanded the people. And then command the people as his, his direction to the commanders um, there. So, spiritual chain of command. The message here was that in three days they would cross over Jordan. So they had time to prepare. God didn't say go. He said get ready to go. And then verse 11, there were three tribes who were singled out whose inheritance was on the east side of Jordan. We see that in verses 12. And the Reubenites and the Gadites, not the Benjaminites. We almost got it. The Reubenites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh spake unto Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying that the Lord your God hath given you rest and hath given you this land, your wives, your little ones, your cattle shall remain in this land with Moses, which Moses gave you on this side of Jordan. And you shall pass before your brethren armed all the mighty men of valor and help them. And until, until the Lord gave, has given your brethren rest as he hath given to you, they also have possessed the land which the Lord God giveth them. Then you shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave unto you on this side of Jordan toward the sun rising. So the promised land extended on both sides of the Jordan. Obviously, if it's supposed to go all the way to Euphrates. But this, this three days time frame, right, for them to cross the Jordan, which requires a miracle, and enter into the promised land, is a symbol, a, a picture, a type, if you will, of the resurrection. So in three days, the nation will have a new beginning and a new land. Just as we have a new life in Christ after his death, burial, and resurrection on the third day. And we enter the place of victory in Christ by appropriating his resurrection in our lives. So that's the lesson that we can get. Just as a simple, or a, a lesson of Bible study. The, the first lesson, uh, or the first rule of studying your Bible is context, right? And then when you see context, if I read something in the book of Joshua, it is written about something that literally happened in the time of Joshua to people in the time of Joshua. So that is the context in which it occurred. And then there's my context now as a Christian reading it to try to figure out how it applies to me. And then there are principles that are, may not explicitly be written in the original text that come from comparing scripture with scripture that can connect the context of the past to my context today. And so that's how we get from the original context to a connection bridge, if you will, to an application for us in today's world. 
and you'll always be able to find, if you're truly studying your Bible, right, if you are rightly dividing the word of truth, as Paul wrote to Timothy, when you're studying your Bible, you should always find what is the context in which it was written, to whom was it directed, that's it, that's where it first is. Now then, find the principle that allows me to connect it here, make application in my life. So then the principle is that God was leading the children of Israel across the Jordan into the promised land, just as he had told their ancestors. And the application for us is God is promising what he's going to do. He will prepare us to, for what we need to do it, and he will provide the way when it is time. And in the same way, we can enter into the victory that we have been promised through Christ Jesus by appropriating his resurrection. So then we saw God speaks to Joshua in verse 1 through 9. Joshua speaks to the people, verses 10 through 15. Then the people speak back to Joshua, 16 through 18. And this will finish out the chapter. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us we will do, and whithersoever thou sendest us we will go. According as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God will be with thee as he was with Moses. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment, and will not hearken unto thy words, in all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of a good courage. That's now four times God has told Joshua to be strong and of a good courage. And this time, um, it's according to the word. Okay, so God's people honor God by doing a few things. First, they respected and followed Joshua. We saw that in verse 16. All that thou commandest us, we will do, and with the sword that thou sendest us, we will go. Good morning. They, they respected and followed Joshua. Those are your two blanks there for verse 16. They prayed for Joshua. According as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee. This is now a prayer of the people for Joshua. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. And then it continues in, in encouraging um, Joshua to do as God commanded him to be strong and have a good courage. So, respecting and following Joshua, praying for Joshua, and encouraging Joshua. And what we can learn there is we have an obligation as followers of Christ to respect the hierarchy or the, the spiritual chain of command, right? As was presented in the in this first chapter of Joshua, that chain of command being God, and then God's man, and then the leaders that are naturally put over us, and then us as the followers. So in that system, we should respect and follow the men that God has put into pastorships or into other leadership positions. We should respect them, we should follow their, their, their guidance as long as it doesn't conflict with the Word of God. We should pray for them. Right? Just as the people pray for Joshua, we should be praying for our pastors and our leaders. And we should encourage them. Even when we want to discuss things that they might be doing that causes confusion, we should do so in an encouraging manner. We should not be conflating or confusing or confounding. Again, I like alliteration. Um, <laughs> any of the situations, we should be trusting God and trusting God that he put the right person in the right place at the right time. And we should be willing to humble ourselves, to pray for them, and to encourage them as they need to lead us. So then, out of this chapter, not out of this chapter, but looking at Joshua chapter 1, a great memory verse to look at is 2 Timothy 1.9. So let's flip to 2 Timothy 1.9 as we finish up here and see how this connects. If you missed it, there were some Wednesday services where Pastor went through all the pastoral epistles, and uh, we finished up going first in Second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. It was a wonderful study over quite a bit of time, but you can look back and find those videos on Facebook and YouTube as well. So Second Timothy chapter one verse nine says, "Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace." which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. God has a plan, and God wants that plan to be seen and to come to fruition in your life. And all it takes is to believe all that the Bible says about Jesus Christ and be willing to obey it. Amen?
So that's chapter one. We've got several other chapters to go here in the book of Joshua. And I think we're going to have a lot of spiritual meat to pull out of this. And uh, if you're watching this online and um, aren't joining us here and you need some of these handouts, just let me know and I can, I can get those emailed to you. Just send me a direct message from this um, or even just reply to the, to the post there and we'll get those um, handouts to you so you can follow along. Amen. Any questions? Any, uh, anything that spurs you to, to think of as we're getting started here? No? All right. Well, we'll pray, and then we'll get moving to the message this morning. Father God, we thank you for the beautiful day you've given us. We thank you for the opportunity to delve into your word, and we thank you for your, your, your word, Father, for your son, Jesus Christ, who is the living word, but also for this uh, preserved can of scripture that we can hold in our hands, Father. So much history, so much love, so much guidance, direction, and wisdom, Father. So many promises that we can stand firm upon. And I pray, Lord, that we would read it every day, that we would absorb it, that we would meditate on it, that we would taste and see that the Lord, He is good. Father, we do thank you for all that you've done, and we look forward to all you're going to do. Pray for the messages to follow this morning, that you would use Pastor Kim as a uh, as a mouthpiece for your word in this service, you can hide it behind the cross, Father, and free him from any nerves and distractions, Lord, to prepare every heart here today to hear exactly what you have to bring us today. I thank you for all that you've done and you're going to do. In the name of your risen Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 